Hey there boys, today we're going to be looking at some of the most powerful weapon DPS in the game, and this is pretty much all going to be done using Hunter. As you might have seen, this season Celestial Nighthawk got a very big buff, and it is actually the highest one-off super damage there is now. Even before this buff, while the damage that Celestial did wasn't quite as high as what Blade Barrage did, it was still something that you could pre-pop and then switch to another exotic and still do the Celestial shot with, so it was still something very good for actual DPS and weapon swaps and the more sweaty setups. So obviously this buff has pretty much just made it the most dominant super in the game for DPS. That being said, there are other ways to increase your damage as well, especially on Hunter with things like Radiant Dance Machines, Dragon Shadow, and Foe Tracer. So today, we're going to be hopping into all those different things and really looking at just how powerful Hunter is as the Glass Cannon DPS setup. And first things first, we're going to be looking at these supers. You really couldn't cover Hunter DPS without looking at these because Hunter damage supers are some of the best in the game. And we're actually going to be looking at four supers, which is probably surprising to most people because they're probably only expecting two, maybe three. And first up is going to be Celestial Nighthawk. Now before we look at some numbers, I do need to point out the fact that the Seasonal Relic this season is increasing the damage of Celestial Nighthawk and also Blade Barrage, so the numbers in game are actually going to be a little bit higher than what I'm talking about here. However, for the sake of consistency, we're going to be considering nothing with the Seasonal Relic, and these are all going to be compared on an even playing field. I also want to point out that I'm getting my numbers from the Aegis Damage Spreadsheet, which I'll have linked in the description below. It is essentially a massive spreadsheet showing the DPS and damage numbers of almost every weapon in the game. They did all of this over the course of several months, doing damage on the right boss to have no extra modifiers against it, and using health bar precise measurement to actually get the damage numbers, as well as showing off the wipe screen numbers in case people want that. There are pretty much no variables in this testing, and it is going to be correct compared to almost any other testing you'll see anywhere else, which is why I'm just going by these numbers instead of getting my own from a wipe screen shooting a dungeon boss or something. Anyway, onto the first one, we're looking at the Celestial Nighthawk damage. When you fully buff up Celestial with Radiant and debuff and all that, you're going to end up hitting for just under 720,000 damage. And remember, you can actually pre-pop this and switch exotics and still get the effect. So for example, you could do your Celestial Nighthawk shot and then switch to Radiant Dance Machines while you're waiting for the DPS phase to start, and then shoot it right at the start and go right into Radiant Dance Machining with no inventory downtime. Following that is going to be Blade Barrage, which was considered to be the king by most people, except for mostly speedrunners who are doing sweaty swaps with Celestial already, and simply it's because it used to be the highest damage one-off super, because Gathering Storm had been nerfed back in Season 20. And it actually still is technically the highest damage super in the game, however I say technically because it is much harder to get the entire damage than it is with Celestial Nighthawk. Blade Barrage, fully buffed up with Tractor and Feast of Light and everything, is going to be hitting for about 735,000, assuming you can hit every single knife, but you need to remember that it's going to be shooting out around 20 knives, and if you're not aiming at a larger target, you're bound to miss one or two of them, and that will immediately bring it underneath of Celestial Nighthawk. In addition to that, it also doesn't have the benefit that Celestial Nighthawk has for being easier to swap with. And lastly, the animation is actually longer than even doing the entire Celestial animation and shooting the gun right after, so it is still technically considered to be less DPS, even though the super itself actually does 15k more damage total. Following that is going to be Gathering Storm, it's still pretty decent, however it is definitely not what it used to be in Season 20. Gathering Storm is going to hit for 640k total, however that is at a couple of caveats. The first one being that you can only have one person's Gathering Storm going off at the same time. The second one being that its damage is not instant, it takes several seconds to do all of its damage, and this means that if a boss has a very short damage window, or obviously you want to have multiple people using it, you're not going to be able to do that. And finally, the one I think that is going to surprise the most people is going to be Mobius Quiver. Most people, when they're looking at Tether, they just want it for a debuff, and they're simply going to be shooting it at the ground next to the target, just to apply the 30% debuff, which is obviously pretty good. However, something a lot of people don't realize is that Mobius Quiver, if you time it out properly, can actually do debuff for the same amount of time as a Deadfall Tether, however it can also do some actual damage. Mobius Quiver is going to hit for 232,000 damage per volley, and remember you get to shoot two of those. However, it is a little bit weird because the wipe screen numbers actually don't reflect the damage of the first volley. For whatever reason, the game doesn't show the debuff being applied to the numbers that are shown to you on the wipe screen for Mobius Quiver, but it is actually applied to the boss's health bar, and the health bar is what actually determines when the boss dies, so you will actually be doing pretty good damage by doing this. 
The main reason this isn't used that often is because it requires very good timing in order to actually get the same amount of uptime on the debuff as using Deadfall, and typically you just don't need that extra 200-400k damage. But if you are in a situation where you need to squeeze out just a little bit more damage for one phase while you're farming a boss, this might just be the way to do it. And now I want to get into some of the lesser known parts about Hunter. Mainly, all of the different ways of doing weapon DPS specifically, completely ignoring the super here for a little bit. Obviously, pretty much all of these strats should be combined with Celestial Nighthawk right now to really be optimal, so I'm just going to pretty much be ignoring that at this part and assuming that you're pre-popping your Celestial and switching to this exotic to do it. And the first, and also most important, is going to be Radiant Dance Machines. A couple of seasons ago, the Radiant Dance Machines got a pretty big buff that actually made them an absolute DPS powerhouse in a rocket launcher based meta. Essentially, by dodging near the enemy and using the marksman's dodge, you could just repeatedly reload your weapon on a pretty much infinite basis, assuming you can get a kill here and there. However, even without getting a kill, you still get 5 seconds of the buff that gives you infinite dodges, and you're able to get a ton of DPS off early on. However, obviously this will excel even more so against bosses that have enemies nearby them because then your rocket can splash and kill them and extend the duration for the entirety of the damage phase. Next up, we'll get into another recently buffed exotic in the Foe Tracer. The Foe Tracer is unlike pretty much any other exotic we currently have for DPS because instead of increasing your DPS or how quickly you can deal the damage, which is what you're doing with most exotics, this one actually increases your total damage. Essentially, Foe Tracer is a reliable way to get X4 surges for your matching subclass. The realistic use of this is obviously going to be using Solar Hunter and using the Throwing Knives to get Solar Surges. Then you could apply this to Apex, Dragon's Breath, Gallowhorn, any of the super powerful solar weapons we have for DPS in the game. Solar as an element overall is just absolutely out of control. And adding on that you can very easily and quickly get your knives back for DPS, it actually is super effective. That being said, getting total damage increased doesn't matter most of the time because typically in a normal raid, your team is going to have well over enough total damage and it's just about how quickly you can get it out. However, when it comes to something like a day one raid or a master raid, I actually do recommend using Foe Tracer because total damage becomes much more important. If you are going to be using Foe Tracer, what you really want to do is basically have your heavy weapon or your main DPS weapon matching surges with your subclass and simply use Foe Tracer to get surges for it and then surge mods on your boots for your complementary weapon of a different element. For example, you could use Kinetic Surges and be on Solar Hunter with Apex and you could do Izzy Swapping with surges on both weapons which would increase the total damage quite a bit. And lastly will be Dragon Shadow. I think that Dragon Shadow is probably the weakest weapon DPS exotic now for Hunter, however it does still have its merits in some niche situations. Dragon Shadow is somewhat like Reign of Fire where it reloads all three of your weapons and you can also be using the melee dodge on it, which is actually pretty powerful, but it also gives you a huge bump in handling and reload and also even gives you large scalers to handling. Handling is actually a really important thing when it comes to doing more complex weapon swaps, and so Dragon Shadow is definitely going to be very good for that, especially on Solar, where you can get your dodge back very quickly by using a fragment. However, in the grand scheme of things, I think it's lacking some of the more just raw power that things like Radiant Dance Machines and Foe Tracer have now, where they're pretty much just direct increases to your damage with no hoops to jump through. However, I did still want to mention it and say that it is still pretty good, even if I do think that a lot of the time there's going to be better options, it's still, like many things, going to be the best occasionally. And that's going to do it for the video. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching, and I'd appreciate if you left a comment below. See you in the next one!